This video is brought to you by Practical Music Theory for the Rock Guitarist, my new book which is a comprehensive guide to all aspects of music theory necessary for playing rock guitar. From blues to the cycle of fifths, from understanding and using modes to choosing the right notes for a melodic solo, from pentatonic scales to chord construction and keys, it's all covered in a clear and concise manner. With accompanying video demonstrations, jam tracks and tabs, you learn to use the knowledge you gain in accessible ways that make sense for less than the cost of a few guitar lessons. Check out the link in the description for more details. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Today being Tuesday, we are doing a top five list. And um, as you've probably seen from the uh, the title and the thumbnail, what we're talking about today, or who we're talking about today, uh, possibly some of the most recorded guitar players um, in recorded music history, really. I'm talking about um, prolific sidemen, session musicians, people who play uh, predominantly on other people's uh, recordings, but in many cases have uh, also had solo careers of their own, but probably best known for playing um, with other people and contributing to some of the, the most iconic rock tunes, um, you know, we've ever heard. And, you know, many of the names on this list you possibly will know, but there'll be some that you don't, but you will have heard these uh, these players uh, plying their trade uh, on many a hit record, and we're going to uh, discuss them today. There are many, many... Um, Fantastic players that I had to miss off this list, and I normally try and employ some sort of um, way of whittling it down, um, you know, on merit or whatever. But I must admit, there was a, a fair old amount of just, you know, kind of close your eyes and go him <laughs> in, involved in this. So if I've missed your uh, favourite player, um, apologies for that. It, it was a little bit randomised. But let's see who did make it onto the list, beginning with. Lewis Shelton. Yes. Uh, is it Lewis or Louis Shelton? I think this is one of those um, UK versus America kind of pronunciation things, isn't it? Um, you know, uh, over here we would say Louis, but let's let's call him Lewis uh, for the purposes of this. Uh, yeah, the, the first time I remember um, hearing his playing was... Um, on that uh, rather creepy, by modern standards, uh, Lionel Richie video for Hello. Um, you know, the kind of, uh, the, 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 where Lionel Richie was like the kind of college lecturer and, um, you know, his, uh, his blind student uh, made a, a bust of me. You remember the video. Uh, but that fantastic guitar solo on that song uh, was courtesy of Lewis Shelton and um, didn't know who it was who was playing it at the time, but um, at some point in the intervening years, I found out and then, you know, oh, I wonder what else he's played on and um, started asking around. And I think this was before, um, you know, that the internet was a thing and you could Google things, but, you know, gradually found out that uh, he played on uh, songs by the Monkees, Stevie Wonder, the Jackson Five, Barbara Streisand, Marvin Gaye, Joe Cocker, Boz Skaggs, Lionel Richie, as I said, and Kenny Rogers. So anybody who can uh, slot into um, a band and, or a song by uh, artists as diverse as the Monkees and Kenny Rogers, uh, yeah, tip of the hat there. So Louis Shelton, first on the list. Let's see who's next. James Burton. Now then, when I was 10 years old... Uh, Elvis Presley died and um, you know you basically couldn't turn on the TV without there being one of the um, some live footage of Elvis and I seem to remember there was one one of his Vegas shows that had been filmed and uh, that was put up on TV and um, there was this guy with this really odd looking guitar uh, the one you see in the uh, in the picture there, of course, the uh, the famous Paisley uh, Telecaster. I do, I think I was, as I said, I was ten years old, and I'd only ever seen uh, guitars that looked like they were made of wood. You could see the wood grain on there, and of course, I was well familiar with um, you know Hank Marvin's bright red Stratocaster, but I'd never seen a guitar that looked quite like that before, and that immediately got my attention. Um, you know what can we say about um, about James Burton? Then, well, we all know he was in Elvis's band for many a year, but um, and I thought that was pretty much it. But when you look look at his list of recording credits, he's very very diverse. Um, you know, he played with another Elvis as well, uh, a certain Mister Costello. Um, 
or Declan McManus, isn't he? I think that's his real name. But yeah, he played with uh, both Elvises, Presley and Costello. Um, that's a bit of a kind of, a, you know, a, a, a box tick, isn't it? Uh, then Ricky Nelson, um, you know, he was obviously the guitar player on uh, Hello Mary Lou. Uh, John Denver, he played with uh, Merle Haggard, Graham Parsons, Emmy Lou Harris, Roy Orbison. Um, do you ever see that uh, black and white night, that uh, that gig with um, Roy Orbison while well, he was on there and I think he did some studio dates with him as well uh, Buffalo Springfield, Brad Paisley Johnny Cash as well, I mean the list goes on, uh, a prolific prolific guitar player who's um, well there, there's just a, a fraction of his uh, credits so you know um, yeah gotta love a little bit of James Burton haven't you, let's see who's next Mick Ronson the man himself Mick Ronson um you know, it just th- th- there's a, a piece of footage from um, the the early seventies, I guess it is, or early to mid seventies. Forget the actual year uh, from Top of the Pops, where uh, Bowie is uh, miming to Starman because Top of the Pops was all lip synced or mimed in those days. Well, forever wasn't it really? <laughs> was it ever live? Um, I think Iron Maiden. Uh, played live once and um, were never invited back. But anyway, um, yeah, this famous bit, bit of footage of um, this, the Starman performance from um, from uh, Top of the Pops. I remember it's now regarded as a piece of iconic music history. I remember kind of probably being round at my granny's house, watching on her black and white radio rentals eating my uh, sardines on toast or something like that I had a bit of a thing for that when I was a kid Um, and just seeing this and it just looked so cool Uh, Mick Ronson and uh, David Bowie both singing down the same mic it's iconic musical memory and you know and again, Mick Ronson, you tend to think of him as being, oh, that guy who played with Bowie. But, uh, you know, don't forget he was also in Mott the Hoople uh, for a brief stint. And that led on to um, his, you know, kind of ongoing collaboration with Ian Hunter. Something else I've just found out while researching that this video, actually. he's um, it's, it's Mick Ronson playing that uh, incredibly catchy riff on uh, John Mellencamp's Jack and Diane. I didn't know that was him, but apparently it was. And who else has he played with? Lou Reed, um, as I say, Mott the Hoople, John Mellencamp, Midge Ewer, Bob Dylan, uh, D- David Cassidy, uh, Ian Hunter, as I said, and Roger Daltrey has also uh, sought out uh, Mick Ronson's talents for, um, you know, kind of inclusion on some of his uh, stuff. My Another one of my uh, kind of favourite memories of Mick Ronson is uh, the Freddie Mercury tribute gig, where um, he uh, where they launch into the assorted musicians on stage. Bowie was there, Ian Hunter was there, obviously the surviving members of Queen were there, and they, they launched into a fantastic version of All the Young Dudes. And um, yeah, that's real kind of hairs on the back of your neck time. Very very prolific guitar player, and um, I don't think gets the attention he deserves these days. So that's why I thought that would include him on the list next Tommy Tedesco now that telecaster you're looking at there is apparently uh, the most recorded uh, electric guitar in musical history that was the um, the claim that was made about it I am of course talking about uh, Tommy Tedesco um, legendary member of the Wrecking Crew as was Louis Shelton who or Lewis Shelton who we mentioned earlier and I could have filled up this video just entirely with um, you know with, with members of the Wrecking Crew uh, you know Hal Blaine and Carol Kay and all, the rest of them Glenn Campbell of course um, but uh, Tommy Tedesco has played on well not only um, you know some of the most iconic um, songs in history but um, also some of the most recognizable uh, film and uh, TV scores uh, just a, a little bit of a, a look at his uh, credits here they include the French connection the Godfather the deer hunter field of dreams jaws and um, I think it was uh, was it Bonanza he played on the theme tune to that but his you know his re- his recording credits as for like records that he appeared on the Beach Boys Mamas and the Papas Neil Diamond Sam Cook uh, Quincy Jones, Art Garfunkel, Aretha Franklin, Kenny Loggins, and Harry Nilsson. So you know, if um, by the way, go and look it up on YouTube. The um, there's a documentary just called The Wrecking Crew, 
and um, it's all about Tommy and his uh, his colleagues in that legendary band of uh, uh, session musicians. Very, very well worth watching. Really interesting. But yeah, you're talking about legendary sidemen and, se- sidemen and session musicians. That could not be complete without uh, a little bit of Tommy Tedesco. So he had to be on the list as well. Next. Steve Lukather. Yep, Luke. Um, Steve Lukather. Um, you know, again, one of these people who you think of, oh yeah, he's that guy out of Toto, isn't he? And didn't he do the, uh, uh, some of the guitar work on, uh, with Michael Jackson on Beat It? Well, yes, he did. But, you know, the, um, if you haven't checked it again, another video to go and check out is the, um, I think it's about two hours long, the Rick Beato interview that, um, he did with Steve Lukather, just the anecdotes and tales that um, that Steve Lukather can tell about, you know, kind of recording dates that he's been on uh, with people, including uh, Olivia Newton-John, Earth, Wind and Fire, Lionel Richie, Richard Marks, Michael Jackson, as I said, uh, Chicago, Barbara Streisand, Donna Summer, uh, George Benson, Jan Hammer, and of course his whole body of work with uh, Toto and his, his solo albums. But it's just, you know, he's just one of those... Uh, people that has uh, played on pretty much everybody's um, you know kind of recordings over the years he's uh, you know arguably one of the most in demand uh, guitar players because he is an absolute beast of a guitar player and as you'll see if you watch that Rick Beato interview a really really nice bloke to go along with it so um, those are the uh, the five uh, legendary sidemen and session musicians that I happen to pick for this video. A few shout outs now, a few honourable mentions. Um, not all of them guitar players. I might do another video in this series where I'm talking about, you know, kind of bass players or assorted session musicians who aren't guitar players. But, you know, you've got to mention Larry Carlton, haven't you? Uh, Leland Sklar, um, you know, uh, Phil Collins' bass player for many a year, but also going all the way back to James Taylor and many, many sessions. Carol Kate there, you saw her, um, where are we, sitting next to uh, Tommy Tedesco in um, in the Wrecking Crew there. Um, you know, really, really prolific bass player and guitar player. Um, you know, a name that I almost uh, did put on the list uh, for inclusion in the main list, Jimmy Page. Yeah. Led Zeppelin, um, you know, it's, but, you know, before Led Zeppelin were a thing, he was one of the busiest session musicians, um, you know, in London, you know, playing on records by everybody from Tom Jones to Joe Cocker and all points in between. I think he played on Screaming Lord Such's uh, records as well, didn't he? And um, legendary, legendary drummer Earl Palmer. Um, there's another honourable mention, shout out. And that is the video for today, folks. Um, let me know what you think of my list. As I say, this this video could have been three hours long if I'd included every, everybody I wanted to include, but I had to do some rather uh, brutal uh, slimming it down. I'm sorry if I've missed your favourite player, but there you go. Let me know who they are down in the comments. Let me know what you think of my list down there as well. I'm always interested to know uh, what you chaps and chapesses think. But that is the video for today, folks. Hope you found it entertaining and informative in some small way. And if that's the case, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so. And why not drop me a like as well while you're at it. Don't forget the live stream every Friday, 5pm UK time. We drink beer and talk about music and guitars. Great way to kick off the weekend. And I'd love to see you there if you can make it. But for now... I'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Look after yourselves, folks. Stay well, stay safe, and above all, stay sane. Bye for now.